let me tell you this one. I went for a past life regression therapy, you know. And me and the therapist, we had like a major bust up. Man, it's all in the past now. <laughs> what I said to her was, who are you to go around raising the dead? And she said, we're not raising the dead. What's wrong with you? Probably went wrong in a past life. I said, you mean because nothing interesting has happened in this one? I mean, I said it in the 17th century, I said it in the 18th century, and I'm going to say it again now. Being a bit wrong is good for you in this game. That's what comedians are. The other thing is, last time I went on it, I ended up on this West African beach, and I, I'm standing there giving this present to this, like, English trader, you know. I thought he come from the land of the gods or something. Next thing you know, I'm in the hold of this Liverpool slave ship, chained, bound for some tobacco plantation in the Dominicas. What do you want to do with this life, Tony? Apparently I said... Drowned in the darkness, I look to the light above as if from a grave. I'm captured in the present moment. The light tells me that everything that has happened has turned out okay. And that everything that will happen will be fine. Way. A man was asking for you, Tony. He said, stay out of it or you'll get hurt. He said you'd know what he means. You're always looking out for me, kid. Did I tell you, Alex? You remind me of Julie. <laughs> she was my ex. She was an angel. She'd never have dumped it. Regrets. We all have them, don't we? The whole of the human race is the same. All the creeds and colours. Including the Inuits. Great, aren't they, the Inuits? Anyone in from Alaska? Some Inuits were shown some moving images for the first time. And one of them, a young boy, said, These images must be the fantasies of the white people who were shown us the film. The white people's desires have been spewed straight out of the head and projected onto the wall, like pieces of brain splattered by an axe to the head. Then the Inuit boy's father says to the white projectionist, No, sorry, the white projectionist said, I'm in port. I see a newspaper headline. It reads, Great Riot Spreads. The date on the newspaper is April 2033. The article says that most government or museum buildings have been razed to the ground. There are people trying to save the contents of the museums. Valuable objects are being loaded onto a ship bound for some safe haven. The ship, though, is torched before it leaves, lighting up the docks for miles.
I wrote a joke about past life regression, but I kept getting the feeling I did it somewhere before. I wrote a joke about that past life regression, but I keep getting a feeling that I've heard it before. So I'm in the bar, playing a piano, and this elephant walks in, starts crying. I said, what's up, lad? Do you recognise the song? He says, no. Recognise the ivory. So the vet comes out, he's carrying me dog, he's more or less in tears, I'm in tears. He looks at me, he says, stay, I'm going to have to put him down. I said, why is he dying? He said, no, my arms are aching. The bar is now closed. So I'm in this cab coming down Smith Down Road and the taxi driver's giving it loads, you know what? That's what I love about my job and my own boss, no one tells me what to do. I said, yeah. Next left. Everyone laughed when I said I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. They're not laughing now. Venison's dear. Been a bit little this week, been the doctors. Talking to this girl who's been in there as well. She said the doctor's just examined me. So he's got jelly in one ear and cussed the other. He asked me if I could speak up because he was a trifle deaf. Oh, it's terrible, you know. Been a bit of good news and a bit of bad news, you know what I mean? It's been like good news is like ah, Uncle Georgie, right? She had a couple of letters this week, which proves the point of no three days are the same. So Monday he gets a letter, right, of his great uncle Richard. Lives in Texas, San Antonio, he was an oil baron. He's dropped dead, that's it, he's gone. Left him $20 million in the will. Tuesday, there's Auntie Jean, she lives down south, right? She's got a big estate in Essex. She drops dead, leaves him $7 million. Wednesday, fuck all. Right, well, uh, I was uh, I was walking down the street the other day, right? And, uh, and I walked past this wall, and it said, uh, it said, Janine loves question mark on it right I was like oh no way it's, you know, what's wrong with her doesn't she even know and then it hit me oh no way what if she's in love with the Riddler I was, uh, was walking down the street the other day right and um, walked past this sign it said um, one man dies every hour from prostate cancer right I thought oh no way what if what a horrible statistic that is. It's not nice, is it? No. But it is, it is necessary. Because uh, if you can think of a better way of teaching kids how to tell the time, I'd like to hear it. I went to my past life hypnotist, you know. He sent me under. And then he got like a real panic on because he couldn't wake me up. He was clicking his fingers, he's clapping his hands, couldn't wake me up at oh, all. I was there for like 20 minutes, he was panic stricken. Yeah. Turns out I was a deaf, dumb Hindu priest from years ago. And then I went back again, like, and then um, into past life regression. Well, that's what I was paying him for. You were paying for it? I was paying for it. Paying in advance? No. <laughs> I told him I'd pay him in the next life. I went back again, like, you know, and I thought, give him one more go, you know. So he took me back and he discovered these wonderful things about me past. He, he found out I was the fella, like, who, uh, who embalmed Tutankhamun. I was the fella who stabbed Caesar, you know, on the back. I was at the Battle of Hastings and I was the fella who fired the arrow, did it, King Harold in the eye. I was the fella who rescued Bonnie and Prince Charlie from the English. It was, it was just amazing. It was, I, I couldn't get over it. But then, like, it turned out that actually I was just some bullshitting bastard sitting in a bar a hundred years ago, you know. 
We saw an advert for water aid and it said little Zuki has to walk eight miles every day just to get water for him and his family. I watched that advert and I thought to myself, Zuki should move. Ah, I've remembered the film I was trying to tell you about the other day. The other one I told you Tony's obsessed with. It says it helps him to live his life. It was about an amateur Liverpool comic who wants to be a gumshoe. You remember? He puts an ad in the paper as a joke offering his services as a detective. Someone sees the ad and tells the comic to come to a hotel room. He picks up a package from a fat man there and inside it are some terrible things. No things that should be left well alone. And the bloke by the window says... If you keep picking away at the paintwork long enough, eventually, the whole wall comes tumbling down. Isn't it a black African guy in the film who wants to kidnap a girl? Or, uh, hold on, no, he's friends with a girl, the black guy is, uh, and he warns the comic off getting involved in the whole mess. Uh, yeah, oh, and there's a hitman uh, who should have gotten the package that the comedian got. What was the package? Anyway, the hitman beats up the comic. No, no, wasn't it the black fella who beats up the comic to warn him off? Yeah, yeah, the black bloke beats up the comic, tells him to stay out of it and says he's out of his debt. No, no, the, the comic beats the hitman up, doesn't he? And the girl's a daughter, one of the leaders of governments somewhere in South America, I think it was. The fat man or whoever it is behind him wants to get to the leader by getting to his daughter. Hold on, no, no, the girl's dad. Is a rebel leader fighting the government, isn't it in Africa? Or South America? No, Africa. It is. And later, uh, the black guy's body is dumped in the comedian's bath uh, to frame him for the murder. But uh, whoever dumped the body then gets scared or doesn't want any headlines, uh, so they get rid of the body. Yeah, and we never see the dead man in the comedian's flat. There's not even a taste of him there when the comic returns. I think the cleaner's done a good job. But the blood is cleaned up quick, so the smell doesn't linger. Uh, that's the idea. That's usually what happens here. Even, you know, derelict buildings are covered up, kept out of sight. You could call it civic pride, I guess. By the way, Tony, some fella called today, left you a message saying that you should stay out of other people's business. Maybe I should tell you a little bit about myself. That's, uh, that's my dad up there. I keep him with me, you know, so he, he doesn't get lonely, like. I got the idea when I was a fisherman off the northeast archipelago in Indonesia. This was in a past life, obviously. I was with the Malacus, you know, and, and what they do is they keep the souls that are dead in boxes and tie them to a house. And that way, you know, they're always with them. When I was younger, my best mate Carl's dog died. Carl was devastated, you know, and I, I went home and I said to me dad, does everything die? And my dad said, yeah, of course, you know, everybody dies in the future. I thought this was the funniest thing I'd ever heard in my life. It just didn't make any sense, you know, and I was laughing and laughing and laughing. I was laughing for hours, it must have been hours, and I only stopped, you know, because my face was hurting that much. So I keep him with me, you know. So he doesn't get lonely, like. There should be a punchline there, but I haven't really got one. Because everyone's dying to get in here. Sorry, I wasn't open with it. And then they say to you, has this jogged anyone's memories? I was going to say a joke about uh, about past life regression, but uh, I think I've heard it somewhere before, hasn't it? I've got a joke. A lot of ways to be lonely in this town. Even for the dead. Especially for the dead. Oh, yes, yeah, this should be a good line. After especially for the dead. 
a spontaneous counter example that undermines the generality of the setup. I think about Julie a lot. You see, it was like from the moment that I met her, I felt like I was reborn. From that point, there was no past and it was just all futures. And there's no good digging up old facts. Basically, the fact is, she's married to me, brother. I've been mean, digging all this facts, go. Isn't going to change the facts. And you see, <laughs> the fact is, you go through life. Going over this, going towards the future, digging up old backwards. Facts. It's a pretty big one. I made a mistake. That's basically. a pretty big one. Sometimes you just got to learn to live with a mistake. Things. Basically, I mean the fact is, you just got to live with these things. And just who do you think you are that you think you can raise the dead? Put him in a car too. Swimming's good for you, especially if you're drowning. I work in a call centre during the day, taking calls off old people. What do you do? I work in uh, an office selling oil. Uh, just a bit of advice, never buy a, um, a home and pigeon second hand. You stumble backwards through life. With your backside bumping into things, knocking them over. and Eventually, all you can see is the debris of the past stretching off in front of you. Are you all all right? How civilised this earth used to be. But as the world becomes more primitive, its treasures become more fabulous. Let me tell you this. Distance is good. I don't like looking at things too close up. They look all grubby. That's the problem with Massa. It just falls apart. I prefer the stuff the dreams are made of. I had a dream the other night. And in my dream, I was talking into a microphone in this big empty building. And after a while, I couldn't hear the sound of my own footsteps. Then I realised I was walking like a dead man. It needs a, a punchline or, or a payoff line. He said you can't say so I went to the doctor the other day, I said I've got a problem with my speech. It's yeah, just like random thoughts that leave now, don't be really fit to get it. Someone joking about past life aggression, I think I've heard it somewhere before. When it's funny, it's funny. Angel, do I care? Take your glasses off, you beautiful. Throw the gun away, Miss Stick to it, Stay out of it. Okay, when did you come down from the trees? When I saw you crawl from under a star. Like amongst the bananas, darling. Oh. 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 You're the 
great white hope. need to tell him it's trouble. Stay out of it, I'll say. You think the past is a safe place, that it's a warm, dark refuge, but it's not. It's really not. Tony! And then he'll say, in an agony of regret, something like, Trouble. I know, kid. It's terrible. Barbaric. An indescribable catastrophe that never stops. Take off your glasses. You're beautiful. <laughs> 